Greetings in our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the May 20th worship service at Zion Lutheran Church, Lincoln, Illinois. Participating in production of this broadcast are Dennis Knauer, Diane Breen, and Ken Richard. Verna Mason is sponsoring the radio broadcast in loving memory of William Mason's birthday. Our organist is Dora Thompson. The opening hymn is number 497. Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord, hymn number 497 found in the Lutheran Service Book. Let us rise. Our order of worship this morning is Divine Service 71, page 151 in our hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that we are by nature sinful, sinful and unclean. And we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways 
to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our intro is found in our worship supplement, comes from Psalms 104. We read it whole verse by whole verse. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love, alleluia. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and re renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in the day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in the holy consolation through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You be seated. Our Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. And then he said to me, Prophesy over the bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay the sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinuance on them, and flesh had come upon them, and the skin had covered them, and there was no breath in them. Then he said to them, said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, so that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, and breath came upon them, and they lived and stood on their feet in exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the house of, whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, we are clean cut off, then prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that, that I am the Lord. When I open the graves and raise you from the graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place in your hand, then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read from our worship folder, our catechetical review on the sacrament of the altar. Who receives this sacrament worthily? Fasting and bodily preparation are certainly fine outward training but that person is truly worthy and well prepared who has faith in these words, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. But anyone who does not believe these words or doubts them is unworthy and unprepared for the words for you require all hearts to believe. Our second reading is taken from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them, resting on each of them, and all were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, 
there was dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And the sound of the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them in his own, his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not these men who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of them in our own language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Perglia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and all the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabians. We hear them telling in, their own, in our own languages the mighty works of God. And they were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does it mean? But the others mocking said they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. Give ear to my words, for these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is, not, it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel, that in the last day it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even as my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, for the day of the Lord comes, the great multitude of the day, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for our hallelujah verse. Our Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Jesus said, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth will proceed from him. He will bear witness about me, and you will also bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. And if I go away, he will come to you. And he will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And whatever he declared to you, the things that, that are to come, he will glorify me. For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said he will take up what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. This morning, we confess our faith in the words of the Apost uh, Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed comes to us in 325 AD. Next week, of course, is Holy Trinity, and we confess the Athanasian Creed. Although named after Athanasius, Athanasius didn't write it. What is really uh, is, uh, of historical significance is when the, Athen when the Nicene Creed was written, 
Athanasius was the secretary of the council, of the, of the Nicene Council, and delivered a paper which resulted in the Nicene Creed. Let us confess. I believe, I believe in one, in one God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of God, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. The sermon hymn is number 905, Come Thou Almighty King, hymn number 905 found in the Lutheran service book. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Text for consideration is a portion of our gospel lesson. He will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. That's for our text. My dear friends in Christ, if you hadn't read the bulletin yet today, I'm Pastor Reimnitz. You know, I'm your friendly circuit visitor. As I uh, commented to, to one of the elders this morning, I said, I'm 
the last circuit counselor of the district of, of, the, cent of the Lincoln Circuit and the first circuit visitor of the uh, Lincoln Circuit. They changed it here in the, in the six years that I served. And of course he asked and he said, it didn't change any of your duties, did it? And I said, nope, just the name. But <laughs> it's good to be with you this morning. It's great, from my perspective, it's even great. A couple of weeks ago, I had to go down to St. Peter, St. Peter, which was south of Vandalia, which was about uh, two hours away, so I had to get up at four o'clock in the morning. Here, it was a little bit earlier, and it just happens to, uh, a little bit later, I should say, and it just happened that when Pastor Thompson called, called me, he says, can you come and, and, and preach? I said, you got the only date between now and the end of August that was open. So they're all filled. I'm filling in for three different circuits. But today we want to talk about the Holy Spirit. Kinda. You know, I was looking at a bunch of uh, sermons, not my old ones, but a bunch of other sermons that you, that you could preach on it. And of course they talked about the, the one who hears the message and the one who speaks the message because that's what's going on there in Acts chapter 2, get into some of the technical parts of it and really turn it into an evangelism sermon. But it misses the point. It would be easy just to talk about that we don't talk in tongues. You know, uh, there are those who say that if you want evidence that the Holy Spirit is in you, you got to speak in some kind of tongues and some kind of gibberish. And as it was, when you look at the text, these men didn't speak in gibberish. They were, they were thought to be drunk, but they said, no, we speak in your language because we're, we're gifted with the Holy Spirit. And it goes on to, fit, on to, to say in our, in our um, epistle lesson that while they were Galileans, they were Medes, Parthians, language, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontius, Asia, Pamphylia, Egypt, even as far away as Rome, Latin, that they would have been speaking in. And how is it? It was known languages that they spoke in. But to, to, to take it down into some kind of a technical doctrine uh, sort of sermon about how you should go out and evangelize and how you should go and, and hear the message misses the whole point. We would be remiss if we went in that direction. What was the job of the Holy Spirit? Jesus himself said it in John chapter 15. He said, he, the, he will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. We would find out that, that uh, through, through Christ, it's a, it's a message about Jesus, that it's all about Jesus, that the Holy Spirit comes and talks about that. Concerning sin, it was unbelief. Any sins that we commit, from the little white lie to the tragic sort of sins of problems that we have in our families to the stuff that we see going on out in the world around us, it's unbelief. It's just one, one point away from unbelief. And hence why it was this morning we came and we confessed our sins. Lord, forgive my sins of unbelief and the things that I did. You know, the middle word, the middle letter of sin is I. It is my self-interest that, that's at, at the heart of that unbelief that, that it takes place. In one church, a pastor uh, made the observation to his adult Bible class that I noticed that every Sunday, everybody, when we confess our sins, I'm a poor, miserable sinner, it, we, we say it with such gusto. And uh, a hand rose in the back there, and a lady said, that's because we know what's coming next. And I said, what's coming next? The love of God. I said, what do you mean, the love of God? The pastor said, and she said, God loves me so much that he forgave my sins. That's what a pastor does. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. The sins of unbelief that the Holy Spirit convicts with. Convicts in righteousness that we are born to be part of, of God's uh, amazing team. 
and the, that the souls of men want the gospel, that wherever Christ is preached, there he will reign. There we will find him in righteousness. It is finding out that, that uh, in righteousness we have his robe of righteousness. You take a look, for instance, at the, the parable of the prodigal son. There it talks about how the father goes out to meet the son after his riotous living in the sins that he committed. And um, we, we believe that in the interpretation, that's Jesus who goes out to, to greet us when we've been lost. And then when the, the son, as they approach the, the city, puts on his robe, the best robe that he has and his signet ring, to point out to the whole village that this is, everything is okay. Because in Jewish culture, if they hadn't done that because he had left home and created such a, a, a problem with all his sins, they would have beat him to death. They would have stoned him. But with the, the father's robe on him, it was okay. He could go home. Kind of reminds you of what God does to us in our baptism. He gives to us a robe of righteousness. In our baptism, he takes off our robes of sin and puts on to himself those, those robes of sin for the way of the cross. And in place of that, he gives us his robes of righteousness that we are declared free and clean in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the righteousness that, we, that the Spirit will talk about, Christ's righteousness what Christ has done for us, how he has given to us. That's Pentecost. Because the judgment is the judgment of the cross. You pay, pay for your sins, uh, for the sins that you've done. It. We are convicted by the word and the gospel. We know what's right and wrong. We know that through, through Christ, we, we are saved. That's the message of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes. It declares, it talks about Jesus. That's what we do when we come on a Sunday morning as the priesthood of all believers. And the, the priest, in a sense, that's leading us all is Christ. Through the word and through the sacraments that he has given to us, the, the word that convicts us, the sacrament of baptism that reminds us that we carry those robes of righteousness, and as we partake of the Lord's Supper, that we are forgiven. It speaks about all about forgiveness as we gather together as his priesthood of all believers. We belong to Jesus through him who's died upon the cross for us. That's what the Holy Spirit is talking to us about. We can talk about the witnesses back and forth, and of course those are things that we can do with family and friends and neighbors and things like that. But the first and foremost is to know that through faith in Christ, I live forever. I am forgiven. I trust in his promises. You know, they talk about the, the two types of faith, historic faith and saving faith. Historic faith talks about, yeah, I know Jesus died upon the cross. I know he lived upon this earth, and that happens. Even the devils, we read in James, know about that. But saving faith is the one that trusts in the promises, that those promises are good for me, that in me, he has given me that forgiveness of sins. That's what the message of the Spirit is about when you read Acts chapter 2, that when we call upon the name of the Lord, we will be saved. Amen. Let us rise. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we confess to be the one, you to be the one true God. Accept our thanks to get today for your Spirit's work in our life. Help us daily to rely upon the Spirit's important work of teaching, rebuking, reminding, and comforting. Preserve us as we acknowledge you to be the God and Lord. Renew, strengthen this confession of your holy people as the gospel is preached and the sacraments are administered. Pour forth through the charity of love in our hearts. Renew your faith by the, your mercy. Sustain them in their hope and faith and work in, in them a zeal to demonstrate your mercy to others. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful, 
the strength of the weak. May the prayers of those who are in tribulations and distress graciously come before you. Especially remember the members of Trinity Lutheran Church in Milwaukee as fire has destroyed their church building. Grant that they rejoice in your manifold help and comfort knowing that the building may be in tatters, but the church still stands. Also, we pray for those suffering the infirmities, that they may be granted the grace to endure in their tribulation. Hear our prayers for Pastor Thompson's friend, Jim Mayes, as he nears the end of his life, for Lloyd Mason's sister, Christine, as she battles cancer, and for those in auto accidents and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. Lord, the planting season is done, and the rain we, we, we need to refresh the earth as we are dry at this point in many parts through only isolated showers that have hit various areas of our central Illinois. We, we pray that you would graciously open up the heavens and bring forth rain for us in, in due season so that our crops may come forth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And gracious Lord, we ask that you be with Pastor and his family as they travel this weekend and all who travel with him. Grant them your, your holy angels to guard and protect them on their homeward way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we rejoice with Pastor Aaron up off and his wife as they celebrate the birth of a child, Nathan Robert, born on Tuesday. We thank you for the mother and child are doing well and pray for their continual health and strength. May your holy angels watch over Nathan and his parents and grant, O oh Lord, that Nathan be brought swiftly to the waters of baptism and be made a child and uh, your child and heir. All these petitions we ask in your name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We gather our offering. You have heard Pastor Wesley Reimnitz of Springfield, Illinois, deliver the message for this morning. You've been sharing in the Sunday morning worship at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street in Lincoln, Illinois. Zion conducts worship services at 8 o'clock and 1030 on Sunday mornings. Sunday school for all ages is at 920 in our education building. We invite you to join us in person for this worship fellowship and Bible study. If you cannot be physically present, join us every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock over WLLM 1370 AM or WLLM FM 90.1 or translators at Lincoln and Springfield at 105.3 FM on your radio or on cable channel 5 on Saturday evenings at 5 and Sunday mornings at 10. Zion's worship services are also available live via the internet at www.zlclinc.org. Zion is a member congregation of the Worldwide Fellowship of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you are without a church home, we invite you to become a part of the Zion family. If we may assist you in any way, please call us at 732-3946 or write to us at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street, Lincoln, Illinois, 62656. Zion also offers a premier education with a Christian worldview for children from age 3 through the 8th grade at Zion Lutheran School. For more information concerning our school, please contact the school office at 732-3977. We at Zion pray that the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We rise for the service of sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Father, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, 
Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sits at the right hand, poured out on us this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples for all the whole earth to rejoice with exceeding joy. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify his glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into the flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the, the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat this body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth and celebrate with the faithful marriage of the feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers and deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be glory and honor and worship with the Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this in remembrance of me, in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Come. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess that you are your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, the ascension into heaven, and your coming to the final judgment. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and eat. This is the true body of Christ our Lord. Take and drink. This is the true blood of Christ our Lord. This true body and true blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting. Pardon his peace. Amen. We rise and sing the post -com can communion canticle on page 164.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy that you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated. The closing hymn is number 500. Creator Spirit by Whose Aid, hymn number 500 in the Lutheran Service Book. Good to see everyone this morning. Man, that was wonderful music. Wasn't that great? Man, I, I read an article uh, a couple weeks ago on the priesthood of all believers and how it is that Christ serves us in the worship service through the lessons, through the sermons, through the forgiveness of sins and the hymns and then the wonderful music. It, it, well, it just felt like we were a slice of heaven this morning. With, with everybody here. So it's great to be with you. Announcements. We got one. I say read the bulletin.
Okay, so you know who asked for it to pray to rain, right? <laughs> <In the park. laughs> oh, that's okay. That was good. Yeah, today I'll have Bible class, and we'll talk about district and, and circuit work. This thing with uh, the young people, it, its history begins 40 years ago. We did it 40 years ago in the circuit when, when I was vicar over at Havana, and uh, I spearheaded the project at that time. Of course, it kind of died off at that time. They all got married and had kids, you know. So, but uh, it's great that you're doing it again, that you're revitalizing the circuit, because from the circuit, it, 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 40 years ago, it sprang into a district-wide thing for, for many, many years, so hopefully it may, may do the same. As we discussed this morning in the sermon, that the Holy Spirit has come. And of course we read in, in, in Romans chapter 10, faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. So we know either baptism or somebody shared the gospel, the Holy Spirit comes with it. But you have the Holy Spirit now. And that's why I thought it was so important that we talk about the message of the Holy Spirit. You go with Christ and Christ goes with you. And that's the message that you can take to other people. Invite them, invite them to this wonderful church where they can hear about the forgiveness of sins in Christ. Have a great week.